As many of you super sleuths have probably figured out by now, I've covered almost everything there is to cover when it comes to GPU cryptocurrency mining. I've flashed BIOS's meticulously tweaked overclock settings, investigated whether mining specific cards are a scam, tested the real world performance of some fan favorite cards, and even took on a certain Mr. Sebastian for building just the silliest GPU mining rig on YouTube. But with all of the GPU mining madness going on, it's easy to forget that graphics cards aren't the only pickaxes that can earn you some succulent crypto coin. And no, I'm not talking about cloud mining. I've already been there, done that, and found it wanting. No, I'm referring to high-powered machines specifically built for the purpose. That's right, it's time to look at ASICs. Now, for those of you who don't speak acronym ease, an ASIC is an application-specific integrated circuit. While that in itself generally requires a thesis or two to fully explain, it basically boils down to this, where CPUs and GPUs and pretty much all consumer computer systems are great multitaskers, ASIC miners are phenomenally good at doing only one or two very specific things. In the case of crypto mining ASICs, they're about as efficient as it gets when it comes to gathering coin and are tremendously heavy. Holy crap, I can't, can't hold that the entire time. When it becomes possible to mine a given algorithm with an ASIC miner, it's pretty much game over for CPUs and GPUs. Luckily, for those who still want to mine with their computer hardware, there are other algorithms and currencies to mine that are ASIC resistant or embrace many algorithms in order to reward both ASIC and GPU and CPU miners. But that's another video entirely. All right, there's a ton of reasons why I've never really touched on ASIC miners before. And the biggest reason of all is pricing. These machines are shockingly expensive and given how heavy they are, difficult to import into South Africa and phenomenally hard to find. But recently, I finally got the opportunity to borrow one so that I can see what all of the hype is about. The unit in question is the Bitmain's Antminer D3, a dash miner that made a huge splash when it originally launched back in September and is better held like this. Some of you might know that the Antminer D3 is pretty ancient in the ASIC mining world, but for those of you who don't, it is super old. ASIC miners, in general, seem to have a shelf life of about three months. That doesn't mean that after three months they all spontaneously combust or anything, they just become far less profitable as soon as the first batch hits the market. The main reason for this is that they're really good at what they do, and the more of them mining a particular card, the higher the difficulty of mining that coin becomes. That alone is enough to massively drop their profitability. But even though all of that has come and gone for the Antminer D3, it's still being sold for a massive amount of money, even without an included power supply. Surely that means it must still be at least a little profitable, right? Well, we're about to find out. Now, since I've never really worked with an ASIC machine before, I was kind of clueless as to how to get it set up and ready for mining. Where's the HDMI port? No DVI connectors? What about all the I.O.? This continued for about 30 minutes before I stopped being an idiot and checked online where I was reminded that ASIC miners generally don't have connectors like that. The only wires required for the system to do its thing are a power cable and an ethernet connection. The rest is all configured straight from your browser. So after physically getting the machine up and running and being blown away by just how loud it was, even though it's literally doing nothing, I endeavored to set it up to see how much virtual coin I could soon be swimming in. The first step was to find out the D3's IP address. While there are various methods of finding the address, I took the easy way and just used an advanced IP scanner. The next step was to enter the D3's IP address, which in my case was 192.168.0.111, into the address bar. After hitting enter, I was presented with the usual authentication dialog box asking for a username and password. I entered root into both fields and was finally presented with the miner's user interface. From there, I clicked through into the miner configuration tab. This is where you tell the miner what pool it should be mining on and where you enter your wallet's addresses. I intended to use NiceHash's pool, so I went to their site, followed the relevant links, and after specifying what algorithm my machine uses to hash X11, I was given the pool stratum. I entered this and my wallet address into the field specified, hit the save and apply button, and that was basically it. The D3 was now mining using X11 at just over its rated speed of 19 or so giga hash per second. Now, if you're feeling super brave and or stupid, you can boost the miner's frequency setting by a fair bit in the advanced settings tab, but be aware that this will void your warranty faster than you can say, oh crap. But also, since this wasn't our unit and we borrowed it, we're not gonna be touching that in this video. We'd have to own it before we could actually overclock it. The last tab you'll undoubtedly find pretty interesting is the miner status tab. From here, you're able to monitor almost every aspect of your miner's performance. 
from hash rate, temperatures, general mining stats, and even fan speeds. In order to see how all of that translates into actual coin, you should be able to check it out on your chosen pool. Okay, with the miner hashing away, I decided to check how profitable it would be to run 24-7. I was expecting quite a lot, mostly because when these things first came out, people were purportedly earning about $50 to $80 per day. I wasn't completely naive, though. I know that profits start dropping dramatically as soon as the first batch of ASIC miners hit a new algorithm and drive up the difficulty. But I thought that, at the very least, it should be able to mine well enough to justify its cost to buy. I mean, it's only been three months. Better late than never, right? Wrong. Oh, so wrong. While the D3's initial profits were astronomically high, high enough to pay itself off in less than a single month if you got it for an okay price, it almost instantly started a meteoric nosedive towards unprofitability. It has since leveled out a little, but profits are still trending downwards. But enough about that. How much am I currently making off of this stupid thing? Well, not a lot. I mean, after taking my electricity cost into account, which you should do since this thing draws well over a thousand watts from the wall, which my current electric rates are 11 cents per kilowatt hour, I can expect to make $5.21 per day. Now that's not bad at all if you're using your optimized RX Vega 64 for mining, but for a mining machine that's currently selling online for $1,234 without the power supply, it's not all that much to get excited about. Ah, oh, heavy. Jeez. At its current rate, the D3 at an electricity cost of 11 cents per kilowatt hour would eventually pay itself off in just 236 days, assuming profitability sticks to where it is right now, which it won't. The D3's profitability will continue to fall slowly and steadily until it won't be profitable at all after electrical costs. But even by then, better, faster dash miners will probably be right around the corner ready to take its place and the cycle will begin anew. But not before their resale price drops right through the floor. That's my biggest issue with ASIC miners, really. If I buy six RX Vega 56 cards for mining and then become unprofitable mining one coin, I have the ability to switch to a new one. As for most ASICs, you're stuck using one or two algorithms, meaning you only have the ability to mine a handful of coins. Coins that may not have the staying power to stay relevant in the long run. And if I do decide that mining isn't for me, I can still use one or two Vega carts for mining and then sell the rest for a decent price whenever I want without too much trouble. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people in the market looking to buy used, barely profitable ASIC machines, because there are some for whatever inexplicable reason. But usually, they're not interested in paying anywhere near as much as you did. But that's all nitpicking stuff. Let's get into the real issue with ASIC miners, shall we? The Bitmain Antminer D3 was the hottest, loudest piece of tech I've ever worked with. I mean, I knew ASIC miners were super loud and produced a ton of heat going into this whole thing. But man, I had no idea. And this isn't even going full blast right now. I've worked with a lot of toasty, ear-busting hardware before, and I've had at least 10 GPUs all mining at the same time in this office. But somehow, the D3 is worse. It's high static pressure fans kept the miner family cool, not letting the chips get much hotter than 81 degrees, but it's dumping all of that heated air straight into this office at a massive pace. After just a few hours of mining, the office's AC can't even keep up anymore, and there's noticeable spikes in the perspiration levels here. But honestly, even with sweat pulling at our feet, the heat's still bearable. The noise, however, is not. While we're all pretty used to working in a semi-noisy environment, none of us can really concentrate with this miner running. It's almost like working in a construction site and the noise legitimately even plagued me in my nightmares for about a week. To be fair, I don't expect all that many of you to run an ASIC miner in your bedroom or place of work, but I'm pretty sure no matter where you run the D3, you might get a few noise complaints. At the end of the day, most ASIC miners like the D3 that have been out for a while simply aren't profitable enough to justify all of their downfalls. If you're one of the very lucky few who can actually get their hands on the first batch or two of new ASIC miners, there's quite a bit of relatively quick profit to be made, and after that you're back in the black, and you can still sell the machine for a good bit of the value that you bought it for, as long as it's before the coin being mined by the machine hasn't crashed to a significantly like it did with Dash. I know I've said it before, and I know many of the gamers watching this won't be too happy about it, in which case, suck it up by the way, whiny whiners, but GPU mining... <laughs> But GPU mining, <laughs> I don't mean it guys, but GPU mining still seems to be the most stable, reliable route for crypto mining. Sure, the return on investment isn't the greatest depending on the card in question, of course, but their versatility, resaleability more than makes up for it, and I'd rather much have a GPU mining rig chugging away earning smaller, more consistent profits than trying to get into the ASIC mining after its first few batch batches hit the store shelves. ASIC miners are amazing machines that essentially perfect the practice of mining certain coins, 
and I wouldn't blame anyone for investing in them, but you need to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Making your money back on any piece of hardware used for mining is never guaranteed. And that's an especially scary thing if you're thinking about dropping $2,500 or more on a single new ASIC. If you're comfortable with that risk, which I know I'm not, then more power to you. I wish you the best of luck. But personally, that just seems like too much big of a risk and I'll be sticking with my GPUs indefinitely. Which, speaking of GPUs, in case you missed the announcement on Friday, Wootware is partnering up with me to give away this Zotac GTX 1070 Ti in celebration of us hitting 40,000 subscribers here on the UFD Tech channel. So head on down to the video description and you'll find the link to enter to potentially win this epic 1070 Ti. It's right over here. Also, while you're down there, and if you're interested in picking up graphics cards or ant miners for your mining purposes, you can use our Amazon affiliate code to pick them up over at Amazon. Doing so won't cost you a single penny, but it does give us a small kickback that helps us keep things going around here at the UFD Tech channel. Be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed this look at the Ant Miner D3. Subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Let me know your thoughts on the D3 and ASIC miners in general, either down in the comments or over on Twitter. I'm at UF Disciple. A big thanks to everyone who signed up to support us on Patreon so far. It really means a lot. And if you're interested in helping us grow here at UFD Tech, you can sign up over at patreon.com forward slash UFD Tech. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.